Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today I'm going to show you about a, another breaking Zygu G90 firmware upgrade. The last time that they did a breaking upgrade, it was when they removed the filter high and filter low settings from the filter high and filter low buttons on the front of the radio over to the multifunction knob. This time they messed with ALC. But we're hams and we can fix this and I'm going to show you how. So I've got FT8 running on my Linux box on my big screen TV in my ham shack. And you can see right over here, I've got my power slider turned all the way up. That's a big no-no to begin with on any radio, on any station. Let me show you what it looks like on the G90's waterfall. We've got this whole thing going into a dummy load and we're putting out one watt so we can do this for a while. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tune on WSJTX. And you can see down here, the line is red and my ALC is 007. And the way that Zygu has done ALC in the past is that zero was all of the ALC, your signal's getting clipped like crazy and you're splattering all over the bands and 100 was no ALC and you are making a perfectly modulated signal coming from your computer into your radio. If you guys don't know what ALC is, it's automatic level control. And in the case of computer digital signals going to your radio, it basically means that your computer is shouting at your radio and your radio is just clipping the top and bottom of it and sending out full marks. And on FT8, you're actually losing the top and bottom of your signal. So we don't want it to be full blast into the radio larger than the passband and have the radio's filter take care of it. As good hams, we want to take care of controlling that signal and modulating it properly. And in a bunch of other radios, the scale goes in a completely different direction. This is only about Zygu radios, and in this video, specifically about the G90, because this is the only one that they have changed the ALC meter on so far. In order to modify the ALC, you want to turn the power down. Power is kind of a misnomer. This really is volume coming out of your computer's sound card into your radio. And on some radios, that sound card is directly built into the radio, but in the case of the G90, I'm using the DE19, the Delta Echo 19. This would also apply if you're using the DigiRig or the XGG comms or any other one of the interfaces to get digital audio from your computer into your G90. It's your computer's audio. Let's take a look at it on the front of the radio while we're adjusting that power slider. So we're still at one watt and I've got the radio into transmit mode and I am lowering the power slider on the screen. And you can see that ALC number is rising up. We're at 42 now. We're getting pretty low on the computer there. And you see how this went to solid green instead of bright red? That's a good, healthy, clean signal. And if the waterfall was any better on this radio, there we go, there's 100 ALC and we're putting out 1.1 watts. And if the waterfall display was any wider, you could actually see the packets going left and right of center as you're sending out individual units of information from FT8. That right there is a perfect looking signal on your G90. I'm matching the power output on the radio. I've got my ALC to 100. I've got a nice straight line that isn't bright red. Beautiful. So now what I have to do is apply the latest version of the firmware. I have another video on how to get this radio onto FT8 and I have another video on how to get this radio's firmware updated. So I'm gonna skip both of those parts this is just about the ALC and the new firmware changes. So I'm gonna install the new firmware and then we'll come back and we'll play with ALC some more. Freshly back from a firmware update, no changes to the computer have been made. Let's take a look at where our ALC level sits now. Let's hit tune and see what we get. We're at an ALC of 009 and zero watts out. So now let's change our power levels on the computer. And you can see we've got a red signal, 79 ALC and still zero watts out. 90 is as high as I can get it. I'm currently maxed out on the power slider over there. So we've got some work to do. All right, so I had to play with it for a little bit. I actually put an antenna on, went into my amp as an external power meter and got it all tuned up. Let's show you what happened. So right up there, you can see my power slider is still pretty darn close to the bottom. It was almost all the way at the bottom before. And then if we look at the radio here, you can see my ALC is around 16. I'm putting out 1.4 watts. The amp is agreeing 1.3, close enough for what we're doing here. Let's change the power up to five. You can see it jumps up to five. The ALC is still at 016. I'm going to mess with the power slider on WSJTX a little bit and see if we can get some more power. I'm getting more ALC and my power's going up a little bit. You can see at 90 ALC, you know, higher number before was better. You can see that we are red on our bar there. We don't want to be red. So I want to get that to be a nice clean color. Red being bad, yellow being getting close to bad. 
and then I guess it's a green color. It's hard to see. There we go. Now we're getting into the yellow down in the 20s in ALC. And we're starting to drop off in wattage as we go below any farther. So let's get this up to where we are just kissing that 5 watt mark. So I've got a 16 ALC and a nice yellow, yellow green line. So somewhere below 20 is where my radio is happy. Now I'm just starting to turn yellow at 22. So get out your magnifying glasses and take a look at that bar right there on your waterfall. And you want that to be just where it stops being yellow and starts to turn green is my estimation for that. So in my case, come on, right there. Somewhere around 16 is where I am good. So I've done a couple of volleys. I'm in the middle of a contact with a VE7 station. Let's take a look over here at our friend PSK Reporter. You can see I'm getting good coverage all over the US. So I want to do a refresh. Now I've done a couple more volleys. We're into, we're just off the coast of Africa. Where's this one? ZD, St. Helena. And this is uh, Canary Islands. My friend's over in Hawaii, of course. And good coverage. Go away, stop that. Yes, I know. Thank you. And then good coverage all over the United States. Looking really good. Plus one, plus five, plus four, plus six. Some of this has to do with the receiving side. Some of it has to do with the transmitting side. But you get a good idea that we're making some contacts out there. Our signal's being heard. And our pink blob is looking pretty good. Even into Japan. Well, I guess that's not, is that Japan? No, that's, no, it's Russia. That's above Japan. And then down into Australia, pretty good. Through the amp, I'm pushing about 85 watts. We made our contact, let's take a look. All right, there is our contact. And today we're at 85 watts. VE7 KPO, I sent him a minus 17 and he sent me a minus 12, nice. And then that was all it took for me to get that one contact in there. Let's go have some more fun. So in today's video, we did the pre-firmware update showed you how the ALC works. We did the post-firmware update and then showed you how the ALC works now and then showed you the way to get it perfectly dialed in for your setup. I hope this helps you out on your FT8 journey with your G90 and navigating all of the landmines and pitfalls of Zygu firmware updates. I've got a video right over here on the old-fashioned way of how to get FT8 on your radio. It's mostly accurate, but it was two firmwares ago, so two changes ago. I need to update that and we're gonna put in a different digital interface that's gonna make it a little bit easier. And then over here is how to do the firmware update. If you're a little bit worried, I've got an easy procedure for you. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.